Are you a developer who's interested in supporting different languages, locales, and regions with the Google Assistant? I'm Wayne Pekarsky, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to take your existing apps for the Google Assistant and extend them to work all around the world. The Google Assistant is available on all kinds of devices, such as voice-activated speakers, phones, and more. And Actions on Google is our platform that allows developers to create their own apps for the Google Assistant. And we're rolling out new languages and locales for Actions on Google all the time. So whether you want to say hello, bonjour, guten tag, and many others, we've got you covered. So let's get started with explaining a few concepts. The first thing you need to know is the concept of a locale. And this is a string that represents the regional language information and can be configured by the user in their assistant settings. As you can see, there are two parts, the language, like EN for English, and then the variation of it after the hyphen. In this case, you can see there's United States, Great Britain, Canada, and Australia as variations of English. While people in these regions all speak English, they have different words and spellings for some concepts and even different accents. For example, the word color is spelled differently. And remember, when someone's using a phone, the user will read the text off the screen, so spelling is very important. Other things that can be different are the ordering of dates and local currencies used for payments. Words can be different too. So to say hello, you could use different phrases like g'day or cheerio for goodbye. The next thing to be aware of is user location targeting. This lets you control the availability of your app in a specific part of the world. And this is determined by the user's physical location and not by a locale. In general, you should make your app available to as many locations as possible, unless it requires the user to be physically present in a specific area. For example, to purchase physical items. So how do we go about using all these features in your app? While you could possibly implement each locale as a separate app, most developers will want to support all of them within a single app to maintain only one code base, keeping common user ratings and user account linking settings. We'll show you how to do this with Dialogflow, formerly known as API, a tool that makes it really easy to develop conversational apps for the Google Assistant. Dialogflow now implements the ability to specify user says phrases and responses for multiple languages and locales. You click on the plus icon under Dialogflow Agent Settings gear icon, and a Languages tab appears. Next, you pick from the list of languages. Note that Dialogflow is separate from Actions on Google, and so it might support extra languages that are not available with the apps for the Google Assistant yet. Once you've selected a language, you can also add specific locales. Here's a list of English locales. If you don't specify a locale, then by default, Dialogflow will apply all of the locales within a language. In general, you should keep things as generic as possible to avoid duplication and only add specific locales if you need to make variations in your dialog. Now, you can create your intents like you would normally do for each language and locale, but now you can toggle between the language chips to specify each one. If your conversation is completely contained within Dialogflow, then you're done. But if you're using a webhook to generate responses, you can add locale support here too. The same webhook URL is used for all languages and locales, but you vary the output in your webhook code. If you're using our JavaScript client library, we have a method get user locale, which can be used to return the locale. And you can then use this to return appropriate strings back to the user. For example, you can easily make different calls to app.ask depending on locale, like this, with a set of if statements. And alternatively, there are JavaScript libraries available where you define all your strings in resource files and then reference them using labels in your code. The nice part about this is you can get translators to convert these files to many languages without having to touch your source code. This is pretty standard practice and similar to what Android developers do with resource files right now. Once you've changed your app, you need to declare the new locales to the Google Assistant in the Actions console. You can specify different names and information about your app for each locale. By default, the assistant will provide a text-to-speech voice that has an accent based on the user's locale. You can also override that behavior if you really want to have a specific accent, such as for your own persona, no matter what the user has selected. You can also use the Actions console to specify location targeting. As I mentioned earlier, you might want to geographically restrict your app to only work in certain regions of the world. This is based on the physical location and is independent of the language used. So you can restrict your action to work only in Europe, but in English, French, and German. 
Every time Actions on Google launches a new language, you can add a translation in your implementation, tweak the Actions console settings, and then you're ready for the review process. To test your new multilingual app, you can use our simulator to test all the possible combinations. You can specify the surface to select what kind of device. You can specify a physical location to indicate where you're located. And you can also pick the language and locale. Now you can try everything out to make sure your app works the way that you want. And once you're done testing, you can now use the Actions Console to submit your app for review. It's really easy to do, and you'll get feedback if there are any problems that your submission doesn't meet the guidelines. Once approved, users all around the world will have access to your app. We're constantly adding new languages to the Google Assistant, so make sure your app is architected to be able to add new languages easily using the steps I just outlined. Many of the actions on Google samples support internationalization. Through the samples, you can see a working implementation of our best practices for internationalization and understand how to best use third-party JavaScript libraries to support this. To get more information, check out the internationalization documentation on our developer site. And finally, we have a great Actions on Google developer community on Google+, and Stack Overflow, so you can discuss ideas and ask questions about localizing your app anytime. We look forward to seeing what you build. And until next time, goodbye, au revoir, auf Wiedersehen.